and I don't remember what the exact number was for national grids, but it was substantially less. Um, a lot of the um, a lot of the disagreement had to do with who the benefit accrues to, and a lot of benefit accrued to in our study the New York State rate pairs. A lot of benefit accrued to in uh, national grid study that there was a lot of leakage to Pennsylvania, and uh, we disagree with the way that that was conducted and the way that power is transferred between the two markets. Um, you know that was one thing. Um, I think one of the things that uh, we will say about the two studies is that um, we're going to have two differences of opinions uh, between the two studies. That's, uh, you know, you can debate expert versus expert, uh, but the fact of the matter is if this plant closes and no new plant is replaced uh, here, then you're going to be buying your power somewhere else, and whether that's from out of state or out of country. Um, you know, like National Grid mentioned, it goes into a pool. And, uh, but there are tie lines to PJM, there are tie lines to Canada. And today, for example, uh, we saw spot power prices in western New York were twice that of New York City. There were constraints in PJM which restricted the flow into western New York, and there were fires in Canada, uh, separate from the fires that uh, Lee had mentioned earlier, that restricted flow from Canada. So there is a need. Uh, and we believe that the long-term benefits from a high efficiency uh, plant like the one that we proposed here provide the long-term benefits uh, for ratepayers. And, and I guess the, the only other thing I would add uh, to John's uh, recap of our disagreement, uh, I guess, you know, the, the concept of ratepayer subsidy of a generation facility, uh, just to be quite clear about what NRG has put into its options, our options have only been meant to uh, provide solutions for the reliability concern. And so there's a lot of talk about, you know, uh, rate-based subsidy of a generation facility and, you know, the competitive market and such. There is no competitive market for this specific reliability concern. That's exactly, precisely why the PSC is holding this um, um, competition, so to speak, to see who can best serve at the lowest cost to ratepayers the reliability concern. And I think that's the only other thing I would have to say. Thank you. Um, we're going to take these last two questions and then open it up for the public statement hearing. I did want to make one statement, though, that on our um, website, for the case, uh, you can see all the public documents that are related to the case, and you can see comments that have been submitted to this point. So you, we do have the case background on our website available. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple quick questions to whoever can answer them. Uh, my name is Larry Barmore. I'm the uh, legislature majority leader in Chautauqua County. Uh, who is going to pay the bill to repower NRG? I mean, where, where is the money coming from? Is NRG going to pay to repower their own plant? So, so I'll, I'll answer, Lee, well, if you... Maybe, maybe, I, go maybe I should give mm -hmm. a, an overview of what the structure of our three scenarios that we, or there are three options that we proposed. Uh, NRG and its shareholders would build at their own risk the power plants. So um, what we proposed in each of the three agreements uh, to National Grid was a long-term contract at a specific price that everybody knows what's going to be over the period of time. And in return for that, NRG would build uh, the combined cycle facility or it would repower the existing facilities or build the, the peakers that John referred to. And if NRG was to go over budget, NRG's shareholders would pay that overage, not ratepayers. The ratepayers would pay the specific contract. Okay, thank you. Um, so in other words, you would be signing a contract with National Grid to sell all the electricity that you produce? Uh, we would be signing a contract uh, for either one of those to basically provide a new plant under a specific period of payments over the 15, 20 years time. So, so for 20 years, you and our, the rest of our customers 
would pay the costs and the, the profits of the plant through this long-term contract. NRG would absolutely be putting up the initial dollars, but it would be our customers that would fund the long-term uh, viability of the plant. And you're going to negotiate a contract based on your best knowledge of what those energy costs will, excuse me, will be over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Because I, I keep hearing the word subsidies, and it sounds like NRG is footing the bill. There, there's no taxpayer subsidies here. You're going to have to buy the electricity every day someplace. And this corporation currently pays Chautauqua County, the city of Dunkirk, the Dunkirk School District, between eight and a half and ten million dollars a year in tax payments. And all I hear from uh, National Grid is that you will be spreading an additional one million dollars per year over the entire region. So what I see is Chautauqua County losing close to about nine million dollars a year in support. We can't afford that. My name is Ian Carnahan, and I'm a proud member of Local 106, the ABW. My question is to the fellow from National Grid. If the power plant is not rebuilt, they're no longer paying taxes. The teachers of Dunkirk will be out of jobs. The men that work at the factory or the power facility will be out of jobs. How do you explain your $1.3 million compared to the $9 million that we would lose if it didn't go through. Explain that to me, please. As I've mentioned, if this facility closes, there's no doubt there's a significant impact to this community. There's no debate there. The, the 1.3 million uh, that the gentleman uh, talked about is the property taxes National Grid would pay on the transmission upgrades we would make. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to open the floor now for the public statement hearing and turn it over to Administrative Law Judge Kim Harriman. We're going to go on the record now. I'm calling case 12E0577, which is a case regarding the repowering alternatives to utility transmission re reinforcements in the villages of Cayuga and Dunkirk. Today, this public statement hearing will address specifically the question of the repowering of the Dunkirk plant. My name is Kimberly Harriman. I'm an administrative law judge with the New York State Department of Public Service. And with me tonight, I have a Commissioner Sayer from the Public Service Commission. I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Sayer for a few brief remarks before we proceed. Hi, I'm Greg Sayer, and I live in Rochester, Monroe County. And I'm pleased to be representing Western New York on the Public Service Commission to the extent that I can. Our standard in this case is what is in the public interest. And as you've heard, it's a very complicated case with a lot of economics, very difficult to model. But one of the factors that goes into the public interest is what does the public think the public interest is? That's what I'm here for tonight to hear from you. And I look forward to your remarks. Thank you, Commissioner Sayer. So um, that we're clear, the comments received tonight are going to be transcribed and posted to the Public Service Commission's website under this docket, along with all the other public documents that have been filed to date in this case. That transcript will then be made available to the members of the Public Service Commission, such as Commissioner Sayer, for their deliberation as they proceed to resolution of this case. The way we do the transcript tonight is through a audio recording, so I'm going to ask that each of you please clearly state your name 
and speak slowly into the microphone and loudly, not only for the benefit of the transcript, for also the benefit of all of the folks who are up uh, at the back of the room as well, up upstairs in the dais. I'm going to call the first five names. We have over 80 speakers who have signed up to speak tonight. We got a late start, and I want every single person to be able to be heard. Um, so I'm going to try to ask you to limit your comments to two minutes in duration. Um, if we get more time, we're all here till 11 o'clock tonight or later. We want to hear from you. And like Commissioner Sayer, um, I was born and raised in Buffalo, and I have family out in this region. So I think that's why I got nominated to come down here, and I'm happy to return home for this. Okay, I'm going to call the first five people just to let you know so you can get prepared. We're going to have Senator Kathy Young, Assemblyman Andrew Goodell, Anthony J. Doyle, Gary Serene, and Ron Johnson. Those are the first five, and we're going to go with Senator Young first. Senator, if you please take the podium. Good evening. I'm Senator Kathy, Catherine Young, and I represent the 57th Senate District, which includes this region. There are many people to thank including SUNY Fredonia President Virginia Horvath and her team for their hospitality, the University Police State Troopers and Sheriff's Deputies for providing security. We especially welcome Commissioner Sayre. Thank you so much for being here to get public interest and public input. I also sincerely thank Administrative Law Judge the Honorable Kim Harriman for being here and also extend my deepest gratitude to the Public Service Commission for its responsiveness and concern for gaining citizen input by holding this public hearing. You see and you will hear from the people most affected by your upcoming decision. Senior citizens living on fixed incomes who already are struggling to buy their groceries and pay their taxes school children who need and deserve quality education, mothers and fathers who need to keep their jobs to support their families, police officers and firemen who want to be able to continue protecting the community, teachers who devote their lives to helping students learn, job seekers who are looking for the opportunity to work on an incredible construction project, leaders of industry who need a stable tax base, and reliable and cost-effective energy so they can continue to provide jobs here, small business owners who want to grow our economy, even the Little League showed up. These are our families, our friends, and our neighbors who are here because they love their hometown and they care about our future. And I'd just like to ask the room, if you're here tonight in favor of repowering the Dunkirk NRG plan, please at least raise your hands. I want the people here tonight to know this is my proudest moment of the time I have represented you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for coming together and being here tonight. Your community needed your help, and here you are. It truly is your time to shine. The possible loss of the NRG plant is devastating. It's a blow from which this community would never recover. So much hangs in the balance. What will Dunkirk and Chautauqua County's future be? Massive property tax hikes, the annihilation of the school, deep and painful cuts in essential city services such as fire and police, private sector job losses, higher electricity bills, reliance on out-of-state power. Those are the very real consequences of the energy plant closing. 
Or we could have a stable tax base, teachers kept on the job and our children receiving the education that they need and deserve, essential city services protected, existing jobs secured, and 500 new construction jobs added for three years while the new plan is being built. Cleaner air to breathe, lower electricity bills, and the expansion of our economy. Those are the incredible outcomes of repowering the energy plant. Many months ago, I received a frantic call from local leaders. The NRG plant was going to be mothballed and was in grave danger of closing for good. The impact on the community was a $40 million loss in tax revenue, wages, and goods and services spent at local businesses. NRG is by far the lar largest taxpayer in Chautauqua County, Dunkirk City School District, and the city of, of Dunkirk. The elimination of NRG's annual payment in lieu of taxes, currently at $8.2 million per year, has serious consequences for every county property taxpayer, and particularly for those who live in Dunkirk. Dunkirk's residents are by no means wealthy, and in fact, many people struggle financially. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, the median income for households is $33,849, while our poverty rate is 25.8%. Property taxpayers already are heavily overburdened. According to the Tax Foundation, Chautauqua County already pays the eighth highest taxes in relation to the value of its homes in the entire country. Imagine school property taxes exploding by another 47% and city property taxes skyrocketing by 42% to make up for the loss from NRG. Add a countywide property tax on top and it is a recipe for disaster. Our assessor says that the average value of a home in Dunkirk is $50,000. Without the stable tax, tax base provided by NRG, taxes on the average value home would have to spike by more than 100, or I'm sorry, $1,000 annually to make up for the difference, something folks simply cannot afford. Recently, I was speaking to a senior citizen from Dunkirk, and she's here tonight with her husband. She said her current property taxes are $5,000 annually. There's not enough money left over from her fixed income to buy groceries, so she is forced to go to the food pantry to survive. Her husband is having a hard time dealing with what he calls taking handouts. As she talked to me, she began to sob, her shoulders shaking in despair as she told me she did not know what to do or where to turn. Our residential taxpayers are not the only ones concerned. Our economy has suffered in western New York. Job losses, companies closing, Dunkirk has seen it all. Enormous tax hikes, tax hikes threaten the viability of the manufacturers and small businesses that we have left. We could lose many more jobs and our economy will get even further behind. If taxes are not raised to make up the lost tax base from NRG, the school would be forced to lay off 58 teachers. That decimates the school. Don't our children need and deserve to have a quality education? The city of Dunkirk would have to make deep cuts in essential services. Fire and police may have to be eliminated. Don't our people deserve to have public protection? Chautauqua County would have to look at cutting non-mandated programs for the aging and our veterans. Let me ask you, don't our seniors and those who made so many sacrifices to safeguard our freedoms as Americans deserve to keep their services?
all of the current jobs at the power plant would be wiped out, taking away families' livelihoods. We would lose our ability to be energy independent by generating our own power right here in western New York, which would kneecap future job growth, especially through manufacturing. We would depend on dirty coal power generated in another state, Pennsylvania, and I'll get to that in a minute, exporting our jobs and tax base. The solution, and in fact the salvation, is to repower NRG to a clean natural gas plant. Repowering the Dunkirk station will stabilize our tax base, save existing jobs, and put 500 New Yorkers to work for three years while they build the plant, give us much cleaner air to breathe, reduce energy costs for consumers, and ensure that our electrical system is safe and reliable. This year's final state budget language agreed upon by Governor Cuomo, the Senate, and the Assembly established certain requirements when evaluating power generation, including ratepayer costs, the environment, the economy, including temporary and permanent jobs, economic development and tax revenue, and electric market competitiveness. The governor has shown great leadership through his New York State Energy Highway Blueprint to upgrade the in-state transmission superhighway in order to move power from upstate plants like Dunkirk to meet growing power needs downstate. If we don't promote the continued development of generation in the region, the energy highway could be a bridge to nowhere. No one wants to see this. And a repowered Dunkirk together with its ability to work in unison with wind in western New York is a perfect match for the energy highway. The NRG project meets the governor's energy highway goals to assure long-term reliability of the electricity system is maintained, contribute to an environmentally sustainable future for New York, encourage the development of utility-scale renewable generation, create jobs for New Yorkers, and provide projects that connect western New York power to projects downstate. We are here tonight because it has been determined that there is an energy reliability need in Western New York. There are competing projects, as we heard, through NRG and National Grid. And as you know, the Public Service Commission will decide between the two. I have listened to National Grid's presentation, and I have to disagree with much of what they said. In 2000, National Grid a foreign-owned foreign company from the United Kingdom bought out Niagara Mohawk, which was a U.S. company which used to be one of our state and region's top employers. Since that time, National Grid's management has eliminated the jobs of hundreds of New Yorkers and moved its U.S. headquarters out of New York State to Massachusetts. Because it is not deregulated, National Grid is a monopoly for transmission and distribution and the ratepayers are held hostage. Un <laughs> Unfortunately, National Grid's proposal to the Public Service Commission regarding the future of the Dunkirk plant would place hardship on our economy, ratepayers, and taxpayers. It begs the question, why would a company that makes its decisions out of the United Kingdom be dictating our future in Western New York? I have compiled quite a bit of material that leads to several compelling questions. I ask that the Public Service Commission answer these questions in a formal response, not tonight, but later. Um, and take this information into, into serious consideration through its decision-making process. As stated in their report, National Grid's confidence in its solution to fully meet reliability needs is limited to the year 2021. And this is a key point to make. It's a period of only six years. Unlike the Dunkirk Repower Initiative, the National Grid option falls short of the Public Service Commission stated minimum requirement for long-term solutions of at least 10 years. 
So here are some questions. Why should National Grid's proposal be rejected outright because they did not follow the Public Service Commission's requirement of showing reliability for 10 years or greater? If National Grid still is considered, what upgrades need to be added to meet the full 10-year period? Governor Cuomo's Energy Highway Blueprint calls for upgrading aged New York State transmission systems and moving at least 1,000 megawatts of power stranded in western New York down to the New York City area. Question, doesn't the Dunkirk proposal match up ideally with the transmission construction upgrades to, to move more power from upstate to downstate? According to the reports from both GRID and NRG, ratepayer benefits from the Dunkirk project go far beyond just Western New York or National Grid service area. Questions. How does the PSC define which ratepayer benefits, which ratepayers benefit from the project? How does the PSC propose to allocate the cost of the project if there are benefits that extend across the state? National Grid advertises the upfront cost of its transmission upgrades as being about $66 million, which says in its report filed in this proceeding that the cost could be higher, as much as $156 million with a total cost over 20 years of nearly $500 million. This seems like a bait and switch, since National Grid maintains the option to recover its costs no matter how much they are, from the ratepayers. NRG says it will commit to its bid up front, while National Grid will not. The real comparison of the transmission option should be up to the $500 million price tag. National Grid stands to make enormous profits at the consumer's expense. Its most recent rate case before the PSC allows for a 9.3% return on equity for capital improvements, that would last for 30 plus years. By contrast, the NRG plan is the most cost effective for ratepayers with millions of dollars in private investment and ratepayer benefits exceeding costs by $300 million a year. Repowering Dunkirk will provide clean, reliable local energy at a guaranteed price, all the while benefiting our, lo our local economy and putting our ener energy future in our own hands. That is the right choice for New York. <laughs> Question. National Grid's transmission will not produce any power, only transport it. Where will that power come from? How much will it actually cost? And will it meet New York's standards for the environment? Can National Grid guarantee that if their expenses exceed $66 million, that the ratepayers will not have to pay one more dime. In a PowerPoint presentation given to the New York State Independent System Operator, New York ISO, dated October 24th, 2012, and this is it, I have it with me, National Grin outlined projects including reconductoring of the Five Mile Road, Homer Hill, 115 KV lines for eight miles, and reconductoring of the Faulkner Warren number 171-115 KV line for six miles in New York State and 11 and a half miles in Pennsylvania. On page 13 of the report, National Grid states, and I quote, completion of the work described should eliminate dependence of the transmission system on Dunkirk's generation. This, these lines tie directly into Pennsylvania. These projects were not included in National Grid's alternative to repowering Dunkirk, yet there clearly is a linkage between the timing and the cost of these additional projects. This information is a demonstration of evidence that National Grid's estimation of actual costs is grossly underestimated and should be reworked to include all expenditures because of the huge negative impact on the ratepayers. So questions. These proposed line upgrades and the building of a substation in Humphrey will cost hundreds of millions of dollars. If these additional costs are needed to eliminate power produced at the Dunkirk plant, 
Why are they not listed in National Grid submission to the Public Service Commission? Why is a National Grid required to revise its analysis to include these additional costs? What is the true impact on the ratepayers? National Grid's Five Mile Road, Homer Hill Line, and Faulkner Warren Line is outlined to the New York State ISO, would directly connect to the PJM transmission system out of Pennsylvania and Ohio, which has a large share of its power generated by dirty coal plants that generate high amounts of pollution, in sharp contrast to the clean and efficient natural gas repowering at Dunkirk. PJM has the highest CO2 densities in the entire nation. Therefore, importing power from PJM will dramatically raise overall CO2 emissions when compared to Dunkirk. National Grid claims in its report, the emission reductions of both water and air described in NRG's proposal are compared to the historic baseline of existing facility operating on coal. However, if the existing facility is retired as planned, future emissions would be zero, and they said that tonight again. This statement by National Grid is misleading and entirely the wrong benchmark. In reality, power transmitted from the PGM system would double emissions, not have zero emissions. On the other hand, the Dunkirk repowering proposal clearly identifies dramatic and significant environmental benefits, reducing all major emissions, including mercury by 100%, sulfur dioxide by 99%, nitrogen oxides by 98%, particulates by 83%, and greenhouse gases by 73%, while greatly benefiting our local economy and putting our energy future in our own hands. Repowering Dunkirk, repowering Dunkirk will provide support for other renewable generating assets, especially wind and solar power in western New York. The intermittent nature of wind resources can be a challenge for the western New York grid, and the repowered Dunkirk plant will help balance the variability of the wind resources for grid operators because the combined cycle units can ramp up quickly and load follow as demand rises and falls on the system. So question, National Grid's plan is outlined to the New York State ISO connects to PJM. Why is the National Grid required to include actual data in their proposal about power produced in the PJM system, including CO2 emissions in addition to the other coal generated pollutants, including mercury, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, particulates, and greenhouse gases? Another serious environmental flaw with National Grid's submission is that by importing power from out of state, this power is not subject to the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, carbon tax. So the question is, doesn't this fact defeat the purpose of the New York State Reggae system? Doesn't imported Pennsylvania energy create an unfair advantage? Some environmentalists will try to make repowering energy an issue related to allowing high volume hydraulic fracturing for natural gas in New York State, which is currently under consideration by the Department of Environmental Conservation. This argument is a red herring because repowering Dunkirk would use existing supplies of natural gas and does not propose using gas produced from New York's Marcellus Shale. Whether or not to hydrofrack in New York, simply has no bearing on repowering NRG. It is surprising that Sierra Club favors a National Grid's plan to tie into the dirty PJM system that has such high CO2 emissions and does not pay Reggie fees. Sierra's, Sierra Club's record shows that they have opposed every major form of energy production in some form or another, even renewable energy projects. However, in January and February of 2013, and this is key, the Sierra Club signed on in support of agreements with AEP and Mid-American Energy to convert a number of existing coal units to natural gas. This is noteworthy as their opposition to repowering the Dunkirk facility 
here in New York appears inconsistent with their most recent actions and cases. In addition to the environmental concerns raised by natural grid, National Grid linking to the PGM system, another glaring flaw with National Grid's plan is that it increases our reliance on external markets while effectively transferring our own jobs and tax benefits out of the state. It is risky to depend on power from other states, as we unfortunately found out in 2003 during a major blackout that left 50 million people in eight states in the dark. And I happened to be in New York City at that time with my daughter. The economic and government costs were staggering, estimated to be up to $8.2 billion. The problem began when power lines in Ohio sagged into trees that had not been properly trimmed, causing fires and forcing lines out of service, something that was out of New York State's jurisdiction. Now National Grid's plan to connect to Pennsylvania transmission throws the ability to control our own destiny out of our hands once again. The age and condition of Pennsylvania's lines is unknown and not under the authority of New York State. Questions. If National Grid ties into the PJM system, what jurisdiction and recourse does the Public Service Commission have over Pennsylvania transmission to ensure that the reliability needs of New York State are met. If our electrical grid is connected to Pennsylvania and the out-of-state system fails, what impact would that situation have on our economy, and especially in western New York? In summary, National Grid fails to provide the complete impact analysis on transmission upgrades that was required by the Public Service Commission's order, and more specifically, ignores the long-term impacts on the community, future economic viability of the region, and does not consider certain factors that are sure to affect market projections. NRG's repowering meets and exceeds all of the PSC's requirements. You see the overwhelming majority where we have hundreds and hundreds of local residents who are directly here. They are impacted and they are here in support of repowering Dunkirk. You see that most of the naysayers have traveled from outside our community. Those who are most... Those who are most against repowering have no personal stake in this issue. Repowering Dunkirk will bring hope, opportunity, and prosperity to our region. Our future depends on it. As a state senator, I am responsible for fighting for my district. On behalf of my people, I ask you, we all ask you, we urge you to choose repowering NRG. Thank you very much. Senator Young, we now have Assemblyman Andrew Goodall. Taco County, as you know, it's the best county in the state. And, Judge Chairman, I can see that you're conferring with the Commissioner and confirming what I said, welcome home. I have to be honest, when the uh, lights went out, in the earlier presentation, I was thinking to myself, we need to repower now. <laughs> and indeed, uh, there's no time for delay. Uh, as you know, during the legislative session that just ended, the New York State Senate and the New York State Assembly overwhelmingly enacted 
statutory provisions relating to the Public Service Commission's evaluation of this very issue. In fact, the statutory language that Senator Young was so critical in getting into uh, law and that was signed by Governor Como specifically mentions this rate hearing by number. And so we have a very clear, unequivocal statement of legislative intent as it relates to this repowering case. And the state legislature, by an overwhelming margin, enacted a provision that states, and I quote, it is in the public interest to develop clean power generation near energy demand to meet the needs of ratepayers, to support local and state tax revenue stability, to promote economic opportunity, and to enhance the state's environment. That is the statutory parameters on which this case should be evaluated. I'm extraordinarily proud of the fact that we have an estimated 2,500 residents who have come out in support of the NRG project here tonight. In addition to those, who are on the first floor and the standing room only audience on the second floor, there's also many people in an overflow room listening to us uh, electronically. These people have come out because this project is critical to the future of Dunkirk, Northern Chautauqua County, in our entire county. If the Public Service Commission approves the NRG project, NRG will invest about a half a billion dollars in Dunkirk. There'll be an estimated 500 construction workers for a three-year period. We will save a number of high-paying permanent jobs, and we will stabilize and increase the tax basis in the city of Dunkirk, the school system, and the county. Those are tremendous positive advantages. On the other hand, if the Public Service Commission does not approve the project, NRG will be forced to shut the plant down. And that one plant accounts for 42% of the tax revenue for the city of Dunkirk. It's equivalent to the entire budget of the entire police and fire department combined. Now, a few years ago, NRG invested over 200 million in putting in pollution control equipment at this plant. And at that time, they negotiated in good faith for a pilot agreement, a payment and move tax agreement. The payments are based on production. So if there's no production, there's no payments. And it would bring the city of Dunkirk and the Dunkirk school system to bankruptcy or near bankruptcy. That is the issue that we're addressing. Now, as I mentioned, through the efforts of Senator Young, and I want to point out also Assemblyman Joe Gillio, who drove over here. This used to be part of his district. It's no longer, but he feels so strongly about Chautauqua County, he came here. Assemblyman Gillio supported on the floor of the Assembly, as I did. That statute sets forth a number of provisions that must be considered by the Public Service Commission. 
I have a nine-page analysis, and you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to read it. <laughs> and apparently a number of people in this room are also pleased. <laughs> but let me just hit the highlights. The first issue, clean power generation. Even the Sierra Club and everyone who submitted comments acknowledges that this plant will be one of the cleanest plants ever built in the state of New York. We know that. And what's the alternative? The alternative is that we import power from PJM or elsewhere. PJM has half of its power produced by coal. The comparison is a state-of-the-art, extremely efficient natural gas facility with the brand and the best brand new and the best environmental controls versus importing our power from Homer City or somewhere else with a horrific environmental record. And by the way, those plants, they're upwind from us. That's right. The National Grid wants you to shut down the local plant that will be a state-of-the-art facility so that we can import power from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and breathe the soot that they produce to provide us with higher cost power. That's not a good option. As re was reflected earlier, both NRG and National Grid's consultant, PA Consultants Group, uh, gave a determination that the NRG project would result in tremendous savings to rate papers, both locally and across the state. The only issue is, how much will we save with the NRG project? And I urge you to read both the PA Consultants Report, commissioned by National Grid, as well as NRG's report. We shouldn't be here fighting over how much savings. We should be fighting over how fast we can get those savings online. There's absolutely no doubt that moving forward with the NRG project will have a tremendous positive impact on not only the economy of Dunkirk, and Fredonia and Western New York, but the economy all across New York State. That is because this power will be the most cost-effective power produced from the newest, most efficient plant in the state of New York. And we know if we're serious about economic development, we need to be serious about having the most modern, efficient, cost-effective facilities online, and that's the NRG project. <laughs> the choice for the Public Service Commission, we believe, is clear. We can move forward with a private investment of about a half a billion dollars here in Chautauqua County in developing the state's most efficient, cleanest natural gas plant. Or we can move in a different direction and build transmission lines to import power from other states that do not meet our environmental standards. As you know, both Pennsylvania and Ohio are not members of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. They're not part of Reggie. They do not meet our environmental standards. We breathe their air the next day, but they don't meet our standards. It is important that we take a thoughtful, long-term approach. And as you know, most businesses enter into long-term contracts when the source of the material they're buying is the most efficient and cost-effective they can buy. National Grid wants you to believe that a long-term contract is bad for the ratepayers. That's not true. 
a long-term contract with an inefficient producer that has to be subsidized is bad for the ratepayers, but a long-term contract with the most efficient plant in the state of New York is good for the ratepayers because it provides long-term stability and predictability, and that's what we need for economic development in New York State. We know that when the state decoupled electrical generation with transmission, that there were some unintended consequences. And the unintended consequence is that companies that are engaged in transmission want to transport electricity as far as possible and charge you the most to do so. Whereas before, they had to look at the overall combined cost. National Grid doesn't buy electricity, it transports electricity. We shouldn't be asking National Grid what's in the best interest of ratepayers any more than we'd ask a trucking company whether we should buy the TV that's made next door or one from across the country. We want the locally produced power. I am very mindful that I have about 2,500 people and that over 80 have signed up to speak. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming here to Chautauqua County and agreeing to hear testimony until 11 p.m. tomorrow. And if you come to the same conclusion that I have, that National Grid's proposal is not as good as NRG's, and that NRG is the best proposal for the ratepayers and for the state of New York, then let us know, just raise your hand, and we can end sooner. Thank you so much. Next, we have the mayor of the city of Dunkirk, Anthony Dolce. Dolce. Thinking coffee right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I've given you a new nickname. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. I've been called worse. <laughs> Honorable Judge Harriman, I'm A.J. Dolce, proud mayor of the city of Dunkirk which just so happens to be the proud home of the NRG-powered facility. <laughs> On behalf of the residents and taxpayers of the city, I would first like to thank Chairman Brown and the Commission, not only for providing an opportunity for the public to comment, but for recognizing the need to provide this forum in a location that is convenient for those will be most directly affected by the decisions that the Commission will make. I believe convening here in Northern Chautauqua County demonstrates the strong desire on the Commission's part to provide area residents and businesses with a reasonable opportunity to hear the facts surrounding the alternatives being considered for the NRG facility in Dunkirk. It is an opportunity we greatly appreciate. Tonight, I urge the Commission to support the NRG conversion proposal, commonly referred to as the repowering. The NRG facility is a critical component of the Dunkirk and Chautauqua County landscape. Its presence has been, and under repowering will be, a significant contributor to the local and regional economy. The Commission has certainly received and reviewed volumes of technical data regarding repowering and tr transmission upgrades and non-transmission alternatives. I would just like to take a moment to reinforce the real-life impact of the decision that is to be made by the Commission. With repowering comes short and long-term economic vibrancy, immediate construction jobs, and their direct and ancillary spin-offs, as well as long-term facility employment. Very rarely 
do we here in New York State of a company ready, willing, and able to invest $500 million? The benefits of such investment are too clear to ignore. Mothballing the facility will cause a countywide economic collapse, the loss of employees, and the elimination of vendor spending in the local economy will be immediately devastating to so many men, women, and their families. The loss of in lieu of tax payments will have an immediate and escalating negative impact on the city, as well as the school district and county. Furthermore, taxes will undoubtedly rise, rates likely will as well, and city services will face significant cuts. This all leads to a possible crippling effect on most, if not all, operations of city government. Additionally, losing energy's very positive community involvement will further negatively impact the region. The fiscal impact on the city cannot be overstated. The facility is an enormous economic engine, with energy contributing fully 18.2% of the city's entire general fund revenue stream. The disruption of that income will create a huge void and will produce a multitude of negative impacts upon city services. Importantly, a decision by the commission to authorize repowering is not only in the near and long-term economic benefit to Dunkirk, but such a repowering is in line with the commission's goal to ensure safe, secure and reliable access to electric services for the state's residential and business consumers at just and reasonable rates. As you can see from the significant attendance here this evening, this is an issue that is critical to all stakeholders in the community. And the widespread and bipartisan support that has been present throughout the process and will continue here tonight is further testament to the necessity of maintaining the energy facility as a functioning component of the state's energy plan. Simply put, the city of Dunkirk, our school district, and the entire county need the repowering of NRG. We need the stability it will provide now and the positive possibilities it brings for our future. Again, on behalf of the residents and taxpayers of the city of Dunkirk, I urge your support for the energy repowering proposal, and I thank you for your kind attention in providing this much appreciated forum. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Gary Cerny. I'm the superintendent of schools for Dunkirk City School District and I stand before you tonight to represent our Board of Education. You've heard a lot of numbers tonight and we even heard one of our speakers mention, boy, I wish somebody would bring these numbers down into real terms. Well, I'm gonna bring these numbers down to real terms for you and I want you to know right now that the school board of the Dunkirk City School District, its teachers, its children, its staff, urge you to support the repowering of the Dunkirk NRG plant, please. Now, the real numbers that everybody been looking for. The payment in lieu of taxes given to the Dunkirk City School District by NRG represents 10% of our operating revenue. How do I make up 10% in lost revenue? Here's a way. I could raise taxes 42.2%. And let's put that into real terms. That would cost an average person with a $50,000 home in the city of Dunkirk an additional $486. Someone in the town of Dunkirk, $543. Town of Sheridan, $570. I cannot do that to the citizens of our community. There's a second alternative. 
I could eliminate 58 teaching positions. Could you imagine a school district eliminating 58 positions, especially a district our size? I can't do that to our teachers. We got high quality teachers that care about kids and they deserve to have jobs working with our children. Now, let's consider this. I mentioned we're looking at losing $4 million should the pilot payment go away. As a former social studies teacher, let me give you a quick history lesson from the past four or five years. Our district's already lost a million dollars because the pilot payment has decreased. We've also lost a half a million dollars in state operating aid. As you know, New York State is famous for its unfunded mandates. As you know, TRS continues to go up, ERS goes up, health insurance goes up. So revenues are declining and costs continue to escalate. Over the past four or five years, we've already had to cut 38 teachers, 32 members of our CSEA force, and three administrators. We cannot afford to cut anyone else. Now, let me share some additional. Please let me share some additional financial burden that we've learned in the last six weeks. We've recently lost 21st century funding of $517,000 annually that goes to our elementary children. This money is used for after school programs, enrichment programs, much needed programs for our children. Hundreds of our elementary kids stay after school because of this funding. It's gone. We've also lost almost $300,000 of 21st century funding for our high school kids. That money was used for homework help, regents review, things like that. Last week, I found out that our Title I funding is going down by another $67,000. And we expect the rest of our federal funds, due to the situation there, to decrease another 5 to 7%. So when you add that all up, we've already lost $2.5 million in revenue the last four years. How can we afford to lose another $4 million in pilot payments from NRG? We're a community that faces high levels of poverty. 65% of my students are on free and reduced lunch. We have children that come to us that don't speak English. Our special, our special education population is very large. We struggle daily to meet the educational, emotional, nutritional, and health needs of our students. If we lose the $4 million in revenue from NRG, it will be impossible to, for us to provide for the needs of our students. As superintendent, Please know that I'm here representing the children of our community. Please, I beg you, support the repowering of the Dunkirk Energy Plant so that our kids have a chance for a bright future. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ron Johnson and I live in Fredonia, New York. I'm a Chautauqua County businessman and the owner and operator of Johnson Adult Homes. As a matter of full disclosure, I'm also the 2013 Democratic and Independence candidate for County Executive. As a Chautauqua County businessman, I fully support the plan to put forward by NRG to repower its electric generation station in Dunkirk. The cost and benefit of repowering has been carefully calculated by NRG. As a taxpayer and a private sector businessman, I urge that we simply get out of the way and let NRG do their business of selling power. Get out of the way so we can allow Chautauqua County a permanent, stable, and clean supply of electrical energy. The delivery system is designed for base load generation in Dunkirk, and the elimination of the Dunkirk plant makes reliable power in this region suspect. We must not create a situation in which our community, our region, our state is dependent on power generated in Pennsylvania, Ontario, and other areas 
not subject to our strict environmental protections. Chautauqua County will need power from NRG planned in the years to come. I do not accept that a weak economy is our fate. Chautauqua County's economy can grow. Our existing industries can expand and new industries can be attracted to Chautauqua County. Industrial growth will mean a demand for more electricity in the NRG plant in Dunkirk. There is no reason that the population growth realized in across our state will not come to pass in Chautauqua County. Let's not assume decline and stagnation as the future of Chautauqua County and Western New York. Let's assume instead growth and prosperity in all of the future of our community. Without NRG power, right here in our county, we cannot achieve our potential. You on the PSC play an important role as New York's watchdog protector and regulators of our utilities. I personally thank you for your service. But today I ask for your support in this very important Chautauqua County and New York State business proposal. It is absolutely in the best interest of the economies of New York and Chautauqua County and of its people. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next five speakers are going to be as follows. David Wilkinson, Joe Simpolinski, Diane Kurzak, James Miller, and John Elf. So we'll start first with David Wilkinson. Good evening. I'm not quite as eloquent as the rest of the people that spoke before me, but I'll, I'll keep to the two minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for writing that down. <laughs> My name is David Wilkinson and I reside at 7499 Putnam Road, Casadega. I'm speaking this evening as a resident of the county regarding PSC C case number 12-E-0577. I have grave concerns regarding the impact of this hearing specific to the economics of my community. Dunkirk Generation Facility provides a stable tax base which is vital to our community but it is more than taxes. NRG Dunkirk provides opportunities for our community to grow and to be self-sufficient. I believe the loss of the generation facility will have a negative impact upon our local economy. It will begin with a loss of tax revenue to the county, followed by loss of good jobs at the NRG facility, loss of control of New York energy resources, loss of ability to sustain life services such as police and fire, loss of property values, loss of small business opportunities, loss of public education, loss of large business, loss of population, loss of the city of Dunkirk, loss of New York jobs, period. The national lobbyist group in attendance this evening would have you believe they have alternative ideas when in fact the plan they support allows the purchase of fossil fuel generation. Let's make no mistake, they do not have a plan except to continue their use of electricity, national gas, and carbon emitting vehicles. The repower of the Dunkirk facility is an opportunity to lead the development of a cleaner energy source here in western New York and is the right choice to make. I have heard this statement and I quote, New York is for New York. I often wonder when that statement will mean western New York. I ask your honor and members of the... I ask your honor and members of the PSC to allow the residents of this community to decide its future and disregard the lobbyist bloggers and their scripted statements from anywhere USA. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Joseph Semplinski and I'm the district director for the United States Congressman Tom Reed. Congressman Reed couldn't be here tonight, but he wanted to make it unequivocal his support for the repowering of the Dunkirk NRG facility. <laughs> it 
to that end and to this point, the Congressman has been in direct personal contact with the Chairman of the Commission, Mr. Brown. He has written a statement regarding the repowering of Dunkirk and the facility in Lansing that has been submitted for the record to the PSC. And on Friday, he personally stood at the shore of Lake Erie in the shadow of the NRG facility and held a press conference to make perfectly clear his support for the repowering. At that press conference was present a coalition of the people that will be most directly affected by this particular decision that is going to be made. We had representatives of the federal government, the state government, the county government, and the local government. We had representatives of the business community, of the labor community, of the education community, both secondary and post-secondary. We had Democrats, Republicans, members of the Conservative Party, members of the Working Families Party, all standing together, made with a single voice, calling for the repowering of this facility. As we all know, getting those particular lists of groups to agree on any one particular thing in this day and age can be difficult. However, you see it before you here in Dunkirk in Chautauqua County. Why is that so? Because every one of those groups and every citizen of Dunkirk and every citizen of Chautauqua County is directly affected. The local people of Dunkirk will be affected by the jobs that will be foregone if the repowering doesn't happen. They will be affected by the jobs that will be lost if the facility closes. The taxpayers of Dunkirk, of the Dunkirk School District, and of Chautauqua County will be impacted by increased payments that they will have to make on their tax bill. But it goes even broader than that. The people of the state of New York will be deprived increased infrastructure to power their own businesses, to power their own manufacturing, to power their own homes, to have the infrastructure to put in place a future where New York State can control its own energy destiny. The people of the United States of America will also be deprived of that infrastructure, will be deprived a step toward energy independence, deprived a step toward saying to the rest of the world that we can take care of our own energy needs. How can we, who have made a goal as a country to be energy independent, be serious about that if we shut down existing infrastructure and refuse to put in place the best and newest technology? The Public Service Commission, rightfully, will make this decision based on what is in the public interest. The energy, the in energy independence of the United States of America is in the public interest. The green energy security of New York State is in the public interest. The payments that will have to be made by the taxpayers of Dunkirk, the Dunkirk School District, and the County of Chautauqua are in the public interest. And the workers, the loss of jobs, the foregoing of new jobs, those concerns for the workers of Dunkirk are in the public interest. On behalf of the 718,000 constituents of New York's 23rd Congressional District and United States Congressman Tom Reed, I urge the Public Service Commission to allow the repowering of the NRG Dunkirk facility. My name is Diane Sorzak, and I'm the energy chair of the Niagara Group of the Sierra Club. The Niagara Group represents Chautauqua County as well as many other counties in western New York. On behalf of the Niagara Group Sierra Club, I'm here to testify in support of Na National Grid's proposal for transmission system upgrades. We also support investments in efficiency and clean renewable energy. Renewables are doable now. Wind turbines are generating electricity across the state from Lackawanna to Tug Hill. And a very successful solar energy feed-in tariff program run by 
LIPA in Long Island just announced a second expansion. Effective renewable energy programs have led to millions of dollars in investment in New York and around the world. The Sierra Club Niagara Group has been ad advocating for the adoption of a feed-in tariff program known as FIT in western New York. Places that have adopted the FIT have effectively jump-started investment in renewable energy and created thousands of jobs in the process. The feed-in tariff also makes it possible for schools, farmers, homeowners, and community organization, organizations to generate income by producing renewable energy that is sold to consumers through long-term contracts. Moreover, the FIT has proven to be the most cost-effective way to get renewable energy. The feed-in tariff program in Ontario, Canada that was adopted in 2009 generated $20 billion in new investments and more than 20,000 new jobs in two years. One in six farmers in Canada are receiving income by generating electricity. In Germany, over 367,000 stable, high-wage jobs were created in 12 years by adopting this kind of a financing mechanism to, pr to promote renewable energy. And we can do it here. The Public Service Commission should reject converting any coal plants from risky, dirty fuel, from one whiskey dirty fuel to another. New gas plants will require new pipelines and increase the demand for dangerous fracking, contributing to worsening climate disruption. Climate disruption puts working families at risk from costly and dangerous extreme weather events like flooding, heat waves, wind storms, and droughts that threaten public health, local farms, and the economy. The loss of an important tax base is an important concern. Short-term programs exist to provide payment in lieu of taxes, and funding should come from a variety of sources to assist Chautauqua County, including regional economic development agencies, workforce training grants, and the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. A renewable energy economy will spur investment in high-paying local jobs, increase union career opportunities, and facilitate new regional manufacturing. Local economies will benefit because renewable energy is installed by local workers who maintain it during its lifetime. Energy efficiency benefits families and community businesses by reducing costs and creating jobs through Green Jobs Green New York programs. Combined with smart investments in the way we transmit our energy, these local investments will increase homegrown jobs and put critical cash directly back into local economies. In closing, we are presented with a clear choice between last year's energy and the 21st century solutions that will lead to greater prosperity and security. We can do it now. We don't need transition uh, gas-fired power plants. We urge New York State to create healthy, local economies by simultaneously investing in workers, communities, and environmental security. Thank you. I curtailed my comments. I'd like to hand the full statement in.